All right, guys, we're live. I hope you can see me. Um, I can. I can't see you. How weird is that? Um, anyway, we're. I'm doing this live with a new software, which I'm really, really, really loving, um, called Ecam Live. And I, uh, what I like about it is I can see things differently on my screen. I can upload a really high quality um, video, and uh, and I got Janet here. So, anyway, so. Um, Today we're talking about rescue dogs. So thank you guys all for tuning in. Those of you who don't know my background, I'll give you a quick breakdown. And that is I have spent more than 12 years uh, cutting my teeth, as they say, uh, in our nation's shelters. I've taught canine behavior, dog training, play groups, and everything in shelters. And, uh, and, and, and that's kind of how I made my reputation because I would try to train my dog and I wanted to kind of give something back. I was a photographer before. I took pictures in the shelters and I started that whole idea of having really bitchin' um, pictures of dogs to be adopted. And in fact, if I thought about it, I would have a copy of my books to hold up here, which I don't have. But uh, the two books I wrote are one is called Selling Used Dogs and the other one is called Desperate Dogs, Determined, Determined Measures. Those are both available on Amazon and... Um, Barnes and Noble or whatever. You can get them anywhere. I know on Amazon you can also get it on a Kindle version. They're both good books. I'll tell you a little bit about them. Um, one is selling used dogs. It's really for shelter employees, shelter um, management on how to market dogs for adoptions. This was when Facebook and everything first started and YouTube. And I was kind of using that format to really promote dogs. And I did these little videos that you can check out on um, the Bound Angels YouTube channel, which I can put a link to at some point and those dogs we had a, an amazing success rate i mean more than 200 animals dogs cats even some rabbits that got adopted or rescued out every single dog i ever did a video campaign on got adopted and back then i was doing the first play group kind of stuff where nobody knew what, what it was but i did um i put these dogs together in these groups and they had fun and everybody saw it and they loved it i also did temperament testing which nobody knew i was doing because i was playing with a dog with a ball or playing with a dog with another dog or something like that and taking food out of the dog's mouth and it showed the behavior of the dog. <coughs> wow. Don't worry, it's not coronavirus. I just have a, I have a sneeze. I have, my allergies have been acting up like crazy. So anyway, um, shelter dogs really are at the, at the core of my heart, right? I really love dogs and I don't think dogs should end up in shelters. So people say, well, you know, you love shelter dogs and why do you have a dog from a breeder? I actually have three dogs from breeders. Um, there's a big difference between the person who loves dogs and the person who is emotionally somewhat dysfunctional, right? I'm going to get a lot of grief for that. People who rescue dogs do a really good thing. I rescued a dog. Janet rescued a dog. Bosman is a rescue dog. But people who are solely determined on saying you must rescue or you're a horrible person, those people are emotionally dysfunctional, right? They're insane. You can get a really good dog from a breeder. You can get a really nice dog and you um, can do the right thing. The problem is not the dogs in the shelters. The problem is the dogs going into the shelter. No dog in any shelter would be killed today if there wasn't another dog coming up right behind on its butt. That's where people make their mistake, right? That's where people don't understand. They get a dog, they get a dog from a shelter, they keep the dog for a while, they, they bring it home, they don't socialize it, it bites their dog. Now you have two dogs that don't get along. And the, the, the spiral goes downward and downward and downward. What you really, really, really want to do is be a responsible person. Get the dog that you can handle, which we'll do another special on that. But get a dog that you can handle, a dog that's good for you, a good fit for you, whether you're a man or woman, big or tall, strong or weak or whatever. You need to know what you can handle. And you need to keep that dog until it takes its last breath. That's it. I consulted with somebody the other day. They rescued a, a, a Pyrenees, and the dog was biting him. And they said, you know, we've seen all your work. Can you help us? And I said, I'm sure. I can, I'd be happy to help you. But the first thing you want to ask yourself is, why do you want a dog that bites? And they've only had the dog for a couple of weeks, three weeks. And they said, well, there's a rescue that will take it. And I said, if a rescue will take it, just give it to them. Because they probably have a better methodology of dealing with that dog than you do right? It's not your job to fix the world's problems. And it's a really good thing in the current political climate we're in. It's your job to be a good person. It's your job to take care of yourself 
One, put your oxygen mask on first. Help your family, your loved ones, your wife, your children, your husband. I'm sorry if you're, you know, whatever sex you are, the opposites or the same. It doesn't matter. The person, your partner and your children. And your children would include your dogs and your, whoever's in your home. It's not the right thing to go to a shelter and rescue a dog that's going to upset the whole apple cart. That's going to attack your wife or your husband or your boyfriend or girlfriend or your dogs. It's not cool. If you bring a dog into the home, that dog must come second. That dog must understand its rank. And that dog must understand that if the proverbial, you know what hits the fan, that dog goes. Right? I don't bring a new dog into my home and then determine later, well, maybe I'll get rid of the dog I've had for 11 years. No. Even if my dog I've had for 11 years is picking on the new dog, the new dog goes. That's the rules. That's it. I also don't believe in people who take dogs, adopt them from a shelter, knowing they've got behavioral problems, when they're incapable of fixing those behavioral problems, and then trying to pawn off that dog on somebody else. Right? If you rescue a dog from a shelter and you know it has behavioral problems, first of all, don't take it. Because more than likely, it's going to be more than you can handle, unless you're a skilled trainer. There's plenty of my friends here who are really skilled trainers. If you believe this, if you believe that you can fix that dog and you have skills as a trainer, then take the dog, right? Take the dog, fix it, train it, either keep it or further adopt it out once it's kind of got into a management skill. By the way, aggression is never solved. Aggression is managed. That's it. You don't, I'm going to give Janet some index cards. She's starting to get some notes. You might want to write them down because I'm still blabbing on. I'm not even ready to take questions. You guys might just, just hold your questions for a minute. So if you get a dog that has behavioral problems and you think you can solve it, and you're a trainer, you're doing a great thing, right? Get the dog, solve the problem, and then adopt it out to somebody. That's super great. I love that. Don't take the dog if you're an emotional person who's just, and I'm not saying, let me finish my sentence. If you're an emotional person who's only trying to get this dog saved, if it has severe aggression problems, whether it's to people or dogs, the dog is a good candidate for euthanasia. And let me tell you why. Because if you take the dog out and you can't solve the problem and it attacks your dog or your friend's dog or your friend or your wife or your husband, or your sister, or your daughter, your whatever, it's causing more of a problem. And every dog, every, and I've given this lecture in every, every shelter I've ever been to, Every good feeling person wants to save a dog. And the sadder the story, the, the better. So if the dog was abused, is missing an eye, only has three legs and has cancer and diabetes and burn marks, that's the first dog is going to get rescued. And they'll probably raise $20,000 to save it. But the really nice Labrador, Shepherd, Pit that has no behavioral problems, that dog is not going to get saved. Anthony, you, you can chime in on this because you know everybody's going to go to the shelter and they want to get the dog with the most baggage. And sometimes, sometimes you got to let that one go. I've talked about this with all my friends in rescue, all the people I've lectured to in shelters, any well-meaning shelter employee will tell you if a dog has a severe bite history, just let it be put down. Just let it go. You don't need to solve the world's problems. Solve your problem. You know what your problem is? You want a nice dog. You want a dog you can have at your house. You want a dog that you can have that's going to be um, a nice dog when you have your grandkids over. You want to have a nice dog that's going to be, that's not going to kill your gardener. A, a dog that's not biased to people, you know, whether men with hats, Hispanic men, black men, Indian men, whatever. A dog that is, is level-headed. And there's a lot of them in the shelter. There's a lot of them in the shelter. Let me tell you. There's a lot of them in the shelter. But the one that's going to grab your heartstrings, like I said, the three-legged dog with one eye has got cancer, you know, he's got scar burn marks, and it came from the meat trade in Korea, you know, was flown over on a private jet at hundred thousand dollars. Don't rescue those dogs. Take your take your efforts and do the most with it. Right? Aggression, especially aggression. I, I've had there was a great Dane in the West LA shelter. I don't know if you were there, Anthony, when that dog was there or not. The thing was as big as me. The dog was a disaster. It bit a kid's face. And I'm going to tell you what I said to the people there. They said, oh, it's a purebred Great Dane. It's a really nice dog. I said, kill it. And the reason I said to kill it is because it bit a kid in the face. That's not acceptable. 
right? It's not like I was smacking the dog around and then I got bit, right? This is a child that was bitten. These are the dogs that I advocate to put them down. In fact, I'd put them down myself to be humane about it because I don't want another child hurt. And I don't want the dog hurt because if you get this dog adopted to some guy, a family, let's say a man and a woman, or maybe a woman, I don't know, and it bites their kid, they'll beat the dog to death. And that's kind of inhumane. So if the dog has a bite history, don't take it unless you're a skilled trainer. A skilled trainer, yeah, take it, rehabilitate it, but understand, listen to my words. I've got a lot of experience with these dogs. These dogs will only ever be managed. Okay, now I got Anthony and I got Pete in here. And they'll both attest to my work in dealing with unruly dogs. I've dealt with them. I've handled them. I like deal dealing with them. It's a challenge to me. But do I have one in my house? No. I did. I rescued a dog named Boots. He was a long-haired Sharpay, a flowered, bare-coated Sharpay. Beautiful, beautiful dog. Nobody could go near him. He bit everybody. He tried to kill my Sharpe when I brought him home. I was too stubborn to let him go. I spent seven days with this dog. Seven days. I never left my house. I had food brought in by friends. I never left my house because he was trying to kill my other dog. After the seventh day, they were best friends. But me and Boots had a lot of talks, and I sprinkled a lot of pixie dust on Boots to get him to understand that. But to understand that what you might need to do to that dog in that situation might not sit well with you. It ain't going to happen with a clicker and treats. It's not going to happen. And if you have a dog, if you have a dog that's serious and that won't back down, like a protection dog or a really human, what we call a civil dog, you're not going to fix it even with correcting it. Right? It's going to come after you. And at some point, it's going to kill you. And there are plenty of stories. Plenty of stories of dogs killing people. There's a story recently of a Malinois that was it to kill a kid or a person? A baby. Right? And everybody's, oh, Malinois this, Malinois that. Well, let me tell you something. Malinois are great dogs. I'm not the guy who's going to tell you, you know, that you got to be a superstar trainer to have a, uh, to have a Malinois. But you got to do some serious work. Right? It's not a dog to just to have hanging around the house. Neither are Mastiffs. You know, neither are terriers, you know, Airedale terriers. I don't care what kind of pit bull terrier, Airedale terriers. Terriers are gnarly dogs. They were bred to hunt vermin, like badgers and skunks and all this. So they're serious dogs. Terriers are notorious for aggression. Nobody wants to say that, oh, because you're going to be racist when you say the pit bulls, terriers, aggressive. Pit bull terriers are aggressive. Right? No, not all of them are. Well, not all of anything are. You know, we live in this society where if I say, oh, that pit bull's dangerous, they oh, Robert thinks all pit bulls are dangerous. No, I don't. No, I don't. I don't think all pit bulls are dangerous. I think a lot of pit bulls are really nice dogs until a moron gets hold of them and makes them aggressive. Right? It's conditioned behavior, but it's also inbred. So the morons, the scumbags, the little asses, now I, can, now I can't monetize my video. Now I swore, and I'm already now I can go down that path. These morons, these jerks, who breed these aggressive dogs in their backyards, and then find the ones they can't use for fighting and sell them on Craigslist or sell them on the street corner. Those, right? They deserve a bat to their head. Dog fighters are the worst, in my opinion. Not only that, because they're they're scumbags, they're 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 needle, right? Who want, to, who want to fight a dog. I mean, go fight yourself. Go find a UFC fighter and, 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 and take it up with them. If you're such a pussy that you want to watch a dog fight and you're going to bet on that, I swore I can go down this path now. I'm pissed. I said damn or or something, and I'm going down this. It pisses me off. Because let me tell you something that happens with dog fighters. They get their one good dog, and then they kill all the rest. That's what they do, right? Or if they're, if they're really then what they do, you know what they do? Then they dump them in the shelter. And these dogs are so f***ed up that they can't do anything. I never swear, but now I'm done. That's it. And who suffers? Shelter dogs suffer. Really nice dogs get put down because you know what? Somebody died. 
and they didn't have anybody to take care of their dog. And their dog went to the shelter. And that's what a shelter's for, is to help somebody like that. Not some scum f who takes a dog and dumps it in the shelter because they're too big of a f to put the dog down themselves. If you have an aggressive dog, put it down yourself. If you're a dog fighter, put a because you don't deserve to live. If you abuse an animal, you're a scum Sorry, Donald. Sorry about that. Your son's listening. I'm going to stop swearing, but I'm really ticked off. Let me tell you how many times I spent in shelters looking at really nice dogs that were just about to get the needle. They were old. They were once loved, and then they live it on a concrete floor behind steel bars because cause the shelter couldn't take care of them because it's so over flooded with these idiots breeding dogs, selling them on Craigslist for $50. And then everybody takes them. Oh, I'll take them. I'll take them. I'll take them. You got to, you got to be realistic. Dogs are nice animals, but they need good training. They need good breeding. This is why I like dogs from breeders because they're generally well-bred. Not all, not all but they're well-bred. A good breeder breeds a good dog. Okay, you want to get a dog from a shelter? There's a lot of good dogs in shelters. But get the good dogs out of the shelters. They deserve another shot. If a dog's bitten somebody, it doesn't deserve another shot, right? That's it. If I'm offending you guys, you know, I'm sorry. If I'm sorry, I swear. It's not right to swear. I apologize. I'm not swearing anymore, Donald. I'm not going to swear anymore. Just hang tight with me. But you know what? You got to know that dog's dying. And I apologize. Donald, I'm going to say something to your son right now. Don't swear. It's not cool. I'm sorry. I lost my temper. I apologize. But I spent a lot of time in shelters. And I've seen a lot of good dogs be put down. And that's really sad. And I lost my temper. I'd like to lose my temper on, on dog fighters. But anyway. All right. So Donald, yes, you do great work. Anthony's in here. Pete's in here. You guys know me. You know, I've... You know who I am. Anyway, so I'm going to take a lot I'm going to take questions. We're probably going to go all the way to four o'clock when I start the member chat. Um, a lot of great dogs in shelters. We're going to talk about them today. Who are we talking about? Which one? Virginia? Okay, Virginia says there's a lot of, I don't know. Um, thank you for doing this event. Could you address training recommendations for rescues in the 15 to 24 month range? Is that the question you want me to read? Yeah. Okay. There's all three of them. I can't get three questions, but what else? Uh, uh, are there specific videos for training adult shelter dogs? Um, how does one do a proper assessment on an adult rescue dog? Okay, so I've got a video um, that's on Bound Angels, and it shows how to do the, the BARC, the behavior assessment and, and reactivity checklist. That's a temperament test that I developed after working in the, in the shelter for a long time. Um, first of all, what was the first part of that question anyway, Jen? I'm sorry. Something about the, the young dog. How do you socialize them? How do you, what was it? Sorry, guys, I'm a little off target here. Um, training. Okay, so basically, whether it's a shelter dog or anything, everything is critical with positive associations for a dog, right? A dog needs to have positive associations with people, with kids, with other dogs, with cats, birds, squirrels, or whatever. You need to get a dog. The number one thing, even if you don't train the dog, is proper socialization. The dog should know that people are safe, children are safe, and all that. That's what you want to do. You want to make sure that your dog understands that everything is safe and everything is structured. Doesn't get to run up to kids, doesn't get to run up to people, doesn't get to do stupid things. Then you focus on the basics. The three basics are come, stay, and leave it. That's it. Those are the three things. If every dog in the world knew come, stay, and leave it, you'd have no problems. That'd be, that's it. Um, yeah, and so Anthony did the, he went through the bark checklist with me. Appropriate to, is appropriate to hand feed rescue working dog over first multiple days, which should be um, a kit of su supplies for the dog. Well, first of all, hand feeding a dog is always a great idea, right? It's, it's, it shows you the dog's temperament, shows you the dog's um, relation to you. Some dogs won't take food from the hand. Um, some dogs will become dominant. I mean, obviously, you know a little bit about the dog before you start doing all these things. But um, hand feeding is great. I mean, I love hand feeding. I feed, hand feed dogs all the time. Puppies, all the time. Um, older dogs, I do it with, uh, with, with luring and treats all the time. I want you guys to know that whatever you give to that shelter dog, that rescue dog, is appreciated a thousandfold. Right? A real, most shelter dogs are going to be super appreciative. They just really need somebody not to love them, right? I know you were thinking I was going to say that. 
I know you were you were thinking Robert's going to say all a shelter dog needs is love, and they don't. All a shelter dog needs is structure, because love is what got him in the shelter, right? Oh, I don't want to put him down, so I'm going to put him in the shelter. That's what happens. People are cowards, right? Their dog is aggressive, or their dog is sick, or their dog is old, or they don't want to take their dog to their new apartment because it's going to shed, and they put it in the shelter. Give the dog structure. Be realistic. Pitbull lover says, I have a dog that doesn't like people only if they try to pet him. I think it's how they approach him. That's not. Um, No issue, what can I do? When people don't acknowledge him, there's no issue. Well, the dog has a defensive driver and insecurity, right? So what you got to do with a dog like that is, first of all, you're going to only want to introduce the dog to people who are going to be okay with possibly getting bitten. Is it bitten or bit? Bitten, right? They got to get, they're going to get bitten. Now you can use a muzzle, right? You can, you can do that. But the, 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 the danger is I always see these um, trainers, so to speak, on YouTube muzzling dogs and then doing this stuff to them and they go see the dog's not doing anything dogs know when they have a muzzle on and if they have a muzzle on they're going to respond differently right that's important to understand they're not stupid they might try to bite once and they see hmm i can't bite when you take the muzzle off they're going to know it's off and they're going to bite so i don't like using muzzles unless it's the worst case scenario i can tell you in 12 years never used one so um Get, a, get the dog around people. Teach the dog solid obedience. Like solid sit down and leave it. If I tell my dog down and leave it, and you walk up and throw a stake in front of my dog, my dog's going to leave it. But you got to make sure that obedience is at the core of his issue because he's not focusing on obedience because he's taking he's assuming a role, right? So what's happening is you tell him sit, and then somebody's five, let's say 10 feet away, they get to five feet away, and maybe at three feet away, he's losing his marbles, and he's going to strike out or act out and become disobedient. And that's what you don't want, right? So he has to have good obedience. Focus on good obedience, focus on good socialization. You'll, you'll start uh, having, having fixed. Dave, uh, aggression between male dogs, it's common. It happens. It happens between females. It, it, it's not uncommon. Dogs are not going to be aggressive if they sense that they can't get away with it. That's really the case. You can see Goofy, Dwayne, Maya, they all kind of know I'm in charge. That's the, the crux of it. Jimmy's a killer. Janet just pointed at me. He's, he's, I wish I should have my other camera on. I should have the other camera. I could show him that right now. So cute to see. All right, you got uh, Michael Harper says, do shelter dogs ever get trained at shelters or are they basically kept there alive for the time being? It's, that's a brilliant question. Let me tell you something about that. So. In the shelter, they're, they're so underfunded. Municipal shelters are underfunded, right? And what happens is these dogs are just kind of surviving day to day. And there's programs that they do, like, oh, we're going to do play groups in the shelters. Oh, we're going to do um, uh, stimulating them, you know, and all these things. And what they do, they give them some Kongs, they throw them out. I don't like any of those programs. I've done them, right? I've done them. What dogs need in shelters is basic obedience training. They don't need the enrichment program. They don't need the playgroup program. They're really nice, right? You see it. You see all these dogs running around. Let me tell you a story. Pete and I and Lewis, we had, we had playgroups at the West LA shelter. We had 17 pit bulls at one time running around in the yard. You know why we had 17 pit bulls running around in the yard? because I was in control, and I had Pete and Lewis in control. We were three alpha males. I know that's a totally incorrect term right now. But we were three alpha males in the yard, and those dogs knew, because we brought them in one at a time. Each one of those dogs knew who was in control, and nobody messed around. Nobody. Can you do that? No. Right? You can't do it. So give a dog good structure, good obedience in a shelter, and you'll save his life. That was what Bound Angels is all about. I'm, I'm in the process still right now of putting the Bound Angels program, the Bound Angels University program online that shelters can all over can get into it. But it's important to understand that there are limitations. Like I couldn't do it myself with five, six, seven pit bulls in the yard. Stupid. I couldn't do it. That's important. Know your own limitations. When you've got backup, you can do it. 
Who am I looking at? This one right here, Geneva. Geneva says, um, I just came in, um, German shepherd from the shelter. He will sit for a moment and run all over the place. Can I get him to sit still? Long line. Well, that's a simple question. If you're asking a dog to sit still and not move, and you're not using a long line, you're not serious about asking him to sit still and not move. Okay, that's important. Um, Michael Harper says, how do you avoid getting bitten with aggressive dogs if you don't use a muzzle? I'm smart. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm never overly brazen. Pete will tell you that. Like, I don't believe in putting myself at risk. I see people all the time, including the famous guy on TV, they like to stage things and, and grandstand things and, and, uh, and get bit or get a dog to bite, right? I've worked with protection dogs. There you know they're going to bite. And dogs don't miss, right? You're just stupid because you're not getting out of the way. The dog's giving you a warning signal. You got you to gotta be careful. You got to watch yourself. And that's not saying I may never get bit. I may get bit. I'm not, I'm not that brazen. Okay, I'm looking at Brips. How do I help my one-year-old shepherd mix who seems to be jealous or overprotective of me when I pet or even get close to other dogs? Well, first of all, he's not jealous. He's, he's, he's resource guarding you. You're, you're the resource, right? And if you allow your dog that behavior, then, then you're allowing him to get away with that, right? But he's saying, hey, you know what? You're mine, and that's it. And that's, you don't want to let your dog think like that. You're in control. You do whatever you want to do. If I'm petting Jimmy and Goofy comes in, I push Goofy aside. If I'm petting Goofy and Dwayne comes in, push Dwayne aside. If I'm petting Goofy and Dwayne and Janet comes in, they all go pushed aside. Pitbull lover. Can dogs be bipolar? I'm not a psychiatrist. I don't know. That one I don't know. They can act, but you know, they can act like it. They can go from they can go from one behavior to another. Sure. Of course they can. They're dogs. You know, any mammal can do that. Right? Any mammal. They can be, go from being really happy to being upset. You just don't know enough about them. And that's really, really important. Um, be careful. You're never really going to understand everything right, about the dog. Try to understand as much as you can. Um, let's see. I see anything coming up here. Oh, Janet's got another one for me. Charles. Oh, Chandler, sorry. My, I don't have my glasses on. I think I look like a dork with my glasses. I'm trying not to wear them. My dog is almost two, and I haven't thought about training until recently when I saw your channel. What should I do? She has a high treat drive, but doesn't lure well. Take some food away from her and start luring those behaviors. Thank you, by the way. What a huge compliment. You never thought about training your dog till you saw my channel. That's a huge compliment, and I'm very humbled by that. Thank you. Um, but start with basics. You know, Start with getting the dog. You're not going to get much of a lure in the beginning, you may just get the dog to kind of like go a little bit into position or follow your hand to the left or follow your hand to the right. Don't expect too much of the dog, right? That's important, especially if you have a rescue dog. I'm going to keep bringing it back to rescue dogs. If you have a rescue dog and you are just starting, be patient. That dog has probably never been trained. There's very, very, very few trained dogs in shelters because people who train their dogs keep them. They're responsible. They're good people. Well, little ninja. Isn't it good practice to teach a dog to be calm and comfortable wearing a muzzle? Example for vet visit, they're in a lot of pain. Yeah, it's a great idea, right? It's also a great idea to crate train your dog. That's another huge, huge, huge piece. So um, you, you want to condition the dog to the muzzle before they need it. But we're talking about two totally different things. You're talking about one, conditioning a dog to a muzzle crate or whatever, and the second one of putting a dog who has aggression issues into a muzzle and then triggering that drive. Very, 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 very different. Um, very, very different things. I love how positive only trainers on YouTube never have videos of well-trained dogs. Of course they don't. You know why? Because they don't have well-trained dogs. And they never work through distractions, by the way. A sniper? Okay, sniper says, how do you avoid... Uh, you dog from losing concentration and being interested and overly excited from other dogs. Well, first of all, I build a relationship with my dog. Any dog I have, I build a relationship that's based on structure and fairness and rewards and consequences. And then my dog knows that he should be paying attention to me. Once he understands that, then I introduce him to those distractions at a distance. That's it. Right? And then when he's not paying attention to me, once he understands we've gone through this, I introduce the distractions, then I correct the dog. You must, you must correct a dog. A leash pop, a tap, whatever it is, you got to correct the dog. Dark, dark stow, dark stow the moon. I don't know what that means. 
uh, maybe dark side of the moon. Robert, I just rehomed my second dog because of COVID-19. My financial situation changed. I feel so guilty about it, but my family comes first. What are your thoughts? You know, kudos to you. You rehomed the dog. That must have been a really horrible, hard thing for you to do. And I feel for you, my friend. I feel for you because times are tough. Um, I, I can't even say, I, I, I mean, you did the right thing. You're taking care of your family. You did the right thing. Remember, take care of yourself first. Take care of your family second, and then go from there. I'm sorry you had to do that. There's organizations I know that will help you with food and vet bills and stuff like that. And you know, if there's something I could do to help you, send you a bag of food, I would do it. If that would help you. Tony says, this may sound crazy. Trust me, nothing sounds crazy to me. My pup's, pup seems to nip once he's outside and in leaves and such. He comes out, starts biting my feet, then my ankles, and his prey drive. Yeah, it's his prey drive. He's just getting super excited. He's having a blast. It's like a kid running around making snow angels and then, you know, you're getting up and saying, okay, dust yourself off and get in the car. A kid might still be excited. So that's just prey drive. That's it. That's prey drive. And, and it's a nice thing. It's a really, really nice thing for a dog to have that prey drive. And you should enjoy it. You know, harness it. Do it. Do something with it. But, you know, just tell your dog, knock it off when they do it. And then... Uh, Get the dog back into training. By the way, when I look to the side, I'm looking at the lovely Janet, um, getting my questions, or I'm looking at the monitor to make sure that I, I look like that I'm properly centered in the thing. Who, was I, who am I talking to? Natalie Hernandez? Natalie, my dog is four, and I am her third home. I have chosen balanced training. What should I expect? You should expect good results, right? You should expect with balanced training, and remember, balanced training is the only way to train dogs, children, anything. There must be consequences. I have been in animal shelters for 12 plus years. I have never seen a dog that doesn't benefit from balanced training. Doesn't happen. That's it. Uh, Deanna or Dina. I think it's Deanna. I never get that straight. My sister's name is Dina, but it's with one N. How do you ease my puppy off? How do I ease my puppy off treats? He is highly food motivated and great when we have his attention, plenty of treats, but it's impossible to get focus and cooperate without treats every command. Well, first of all, if he's a puppy, you shouldn't be taking him off treats, right? You should get him so conditioned to treats. And that would be a great question for Janet because she's been doing a really amazing job with Dwayne. Um, she has noticed in the last two years that she's plus that she's been training him that everything is easy to lure with treats and build build in with treats, but you must, you must have a correction. Your puppy's too young for corrections, probably. Keep getting the dog conditioned. Delay the delivery of the treat. Expect compliance. Delay the delivery of the treat. When the dog is a year and a half old, year, year and a half old, start putting corrections on the dog. Be a little firmer with the dog. Okay, same person. You said, what? No, I'm giving you two questions here. What do you think of trainers who tell you that you should never punish a dog and give positive reinforcements only? I think they're idiots. If you want to know the truth, right? They're stupid. I'm going to tell you this. There's a big difference between the word punish and the word correct. Positive only trainers will constantly tell you, don't punish the dog. Don't punish the dog. Don't use negative markers because they're morons, right? They're stupid when it comes to dog training. They might be intellectual doctors. I've talked to veterinary behaviorists who are doctors, who are brilliant, much more brilliant than me. I'm not a really smart guy necessarily. I've got great common sense and great street sense. But I'm not a brilliant guy. Anybody will tell you that. Can't spell very well. I asked Janet how to say certain words, but I've got great common sense. And I'm charming as hell, right? But Punishment is punitive and it comes after the fact. Corrections come to correct a behavior. You, to correct something is to make something incorrect correct. You're making it correct. If you're not going to make something correct, whether it's the use of withholding the treat or popping the dogs on a leash or correcting the dog, you're not serving the dog properly. And those trainers should not be telling you that. It's terrible. It's like somebody saying, you have cancer, don't operate, just take some turmeric. It's stupid. Chris, all right. Chris says, I adopted a nine-week-old female Malinois puppy from a rescue whose mother was nine months old. 
when she had the litter. Is there any specific behavioral issues related to such a young mother? Well, yeah, because the, the, the mother doesn't have great experience as a dog, right? The dog never, the puppy, the, the mother never matured into a dog. So it's hard for a puppy to raise a puppy. It's like young girls having children. I mean, you know, it's not good. I think it's terrible. That's why we want children to grow up, to be mature. We want maturity is something the dog tries to inst the mother tries to instill in the dog. So that's why people get puppies and like, oh, it's a puppy, it's cute, it's cute, it's cute. It's cute, but it's got to grow into being a dog. And if you don't mature a puppy into a dog, which a mother will do and a, and a, and a handler will do, if you don't do that, you've got a five-year-old puppy, and that's impossible to deal with. <clears throat> Okay, Margaret says, can you start luring at any age? I'm getting a three-year-old shepherd from a rescue. I know crating her first in structure of house rules, but how? Yeah, so that's a great question. Very good question, actually. And yes, you can. You can start luring at any age. And the way you do that is by hand feeding. Beginning a hand feeding protocol is the beginning to luring. Right? That's how you lure a dog. You lure them by holding the food and moving backwards. L holding the dog, uh, holding the food and putting it up over their heads. All those things. Those are all great. By the way, you guys, thank you for all the super chats. I haven't been calling you out name by name because somebody complained that I did that. I don't know why. Okay, Dennis. Dennis says, um, hey, Robert, thank you for your constant content. I listen to your videos all the time. What are your thoughts on AKC titles? Do they mean anything to you? Well, I'm going to tell you something. They do. And you know why? Because I work my butt off to get them on my talk. Um, are they really that important? I don't know. Jan is like shaking her head here like a, like a crazy bang rocker chick. She's going, yeah, yeah, they mean a lot. They mean a lot to people who do them. And I'll tell you why they mean something. Because you put the work in. You put the legwork in to, to do it, right? You can have a really well-trained dog with no, um, no real titles. But the titles are kind of nice. I mean, Goofy has more titles than anybody. He's a ton of titles. Um, do you only talk about dogs? Yeah, it's a dog channel. Um, Brave, fearless, strong. It really, I got it. It's all I can talk about. Aubrey something. Aubrey, oh, Aubrey, Aubrey. If your names are strange, I'm not going to get it. I, I don't, I'm not good. Like, I can't read license plates. I go, what does that mean? I don't get it. If you're looking for a dog to adopt from a shelter, what are behaviors to look for that indicate a good dog? I'll tell you what they are. A dog that's pleasant to be around. A dog that's really nice. A dog that is... Um, cordial, a dog that likes to be around you, a dog that's not completely checked out. Look at a dog. This is what we used to do when we were training the dogs in shelters. We would teach them to take treats from people and to sit and to down and to engage to people. A dog that engages to you is going to be a nice dog to train and a nice dog to live in, live with, not live in. Um, a dog that is running around the yard like an idiot chasing a ball is going to have this crazy degree of drive that you have to undo. And that's really hard. So a dog that checks into you, a dog that's engaging to you, a dog that wants to be petted and those kind of things, it makes usually a really nice dog. It's kind of like finding a girlfriend. That's what I looked for with Janet. She was always like looking for it to be petted, and I like that. Heather? She's smiling. Shelters here say, I have to avoid all contact with all other dogs if I have one of their reactive dogs. I think it's maybe better to slowly socialize the dog. What are your views? Well, if you're getting a, 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 a reactive dog... They're telling you the right thing because they don't want their dog being biting other dogs, right? If you're getting a reactive dog, you better um, you, you you better keep it away from other dogs till it's trained, right? Um, I think Anthony's got something going on with somebody, but I back you up, Anthony. Whatever you say, I'm on your side there. So you're telling somebody off. It's with it's with you're cool with me. Um, What are we looking at here? Rebecca? How do you stop a younger dog from trying to grab a treat from your hand and biting you in the process? You got to alpha up. Right? I would say man up, but then I get in trouble. Right? right? You got to, you got to, um, they up. Right? Because it's not a he or a him, it's a they now. Seriously, let me tell you what, you got to man up. You got to embrace your inner strength and you don't let a dog have the treat. That's it. Gamby, Kavuma, how do you stop your dog from peeing or pooping in the house? Crate training. I'm not, I don't really want to get into that. I kind of worked on that, but crate training, crate training, crate training, crate training. Um, what's this thing from Mark here? Uh, what's, uh, I, I, in a behavioral, separately assess my only rescue as having good temperament, non-reactive. He would have, 
Ace the Bark Checker soon after adoption, he became dog and human reactive. It made me hesitate to adopt from a shelter in the future. He was like, okay, so I'm going to tell you a really great thing, right? So hold the questions for a second. Hold the questions because you're going to love this. This is worth the price of admission. Dogs act one way in the shelter and another way when they get up. Very, very common, right? Just hold the questions. Listen to what I'm saying. This is critical. You can have a dog that's in the shelter that's aggressive, reactive, all this. Hold your questions. It's a good point. All these dogs, or not all these dogs, a lot of these dogs will change when they get out. So they'll turn from a really aggressive dog to a really nice dog. You'll also have dogs who are really nice in the shelter and come out and become aggressive. It doesn't happen all the time. It happens, though. And let me tell you why. When a dog goes to a shelter, it's like a person going to jail, right? The smell, the sight, and the sound of fear is in the air. So when they get there, they have to do something. I'll give you a great story. My friend Mike, an old friend of mine, went to jail. He stole a car. He stole the car and went to jail, and he was scared, scared to death, scared to death. He was like a, just like a, a Southern California white boy, right? He was going to probably die in jail. But what did he do? He found a really tough guy in jail, and he went over, and he punched him in the face as hard as he could. He started a fight, right? And he fought, and he got his ass kicked, but he gained a lot of respect. And that's so something Mike would never do if he wasn't in jail. So he had to portray an image of himself to be tougher, to make himself feel like he would be safer. And a lot of dogs will do this. They'll, they'll assert themselves, they'll be very strong, they'll be very dominant, but deep down inside they're not. And unless you have somebody who can really read the behavior of that dog, you can misread it. And the dog can appear friendly, it can let you do this, it can let you do this, but that's not really them. So if it happened to you, it's not a big deal. It, 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 it happens, right? I've assessed dogs that have had, had different personalities. It didn't happen often. But it happens. So don't feel bad about it. Somebody said, do I recommend feeding raw meat to dogs? And um, I do it. I can't tell you because I'm not a vet. And I don't want, if your dog gets sick, I mean, your dog has a better chance of getting sick on kibble than on raw meat. My female, okay, so this goes out to swim upstream. What is, he's a salmon. <clears throat> My female rescue is afraid of men. What should I do? Well, the reason the female, your female, is it your female rescue is afraid of men is probably because she wasn't properly socialized with men. She's probably raised by women, you know, hasn't been around men that much. What you can do is get her around, again, focus on some good obedience, focus on some positive experience around men, maybe feed the dog, have a bowl of food down when there's men in, in her presence, and slowly get her to trust them. It's, it's not something you're going to force. You can't explain it to her, you can't force her into it, but you've got to make the presence of a man a positive thing in her life. That's it. Make it. Make the experience positive just by throw some treats on the ground where there's a man around. Control her. Don't let her run up and bark or do anything like that. But teach her that slowly and then eventually have men bring her food. I don't know your whole situation, so it's really, really, really hard for me to answer it. Mark, that's a two-part question. Um, I, in a behavior sense, I already answered that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the first mistake Janet's made all year. Can you believe that? Um... Okay, what's this? Levi. Oh, Levi. Is it Levi? Okay. Oh, here. Uh, I, have a, I have a dog that has a reactive problems. Is it worse to have it but without interacting with other dogs? I rescue a dog like that in a shelter. I don't understand what's the question. Do you understand the question? I have a dog that has reactive problems. Is it worse to have it but without interacting with other dogs? Yeah. Oh, 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 okay, so she's so brilliant. Okay, um, well, you have to keep it isolated away from other dogs to teach it obedience first, right? The on you're only gonna solve aggression issues if the dog has something to fall back on, unless you use immense consequence, immense like corrections and, and, and almost borderline punishment, right? Is that your phone? Or I thought her st stomach was gurgling, we just had lunch. Um, you, you need to teach it the obedience, the behavior you want it to exhibit without the other dogs in his presence, then bring the other dogs in. It's not fair to try to teach a dog obedience in the presence of another dog when it has an issue with other dogs. It's really, really important. Okay, Miss Malone. Miss Malone. Oh, Mia Malone. 
When a sheltered dog's bio says he'd like to be an only dog household, is it ever possible to get him to accept other dogs? So sad that adopters bypass such dogs. Well, first of all, a lot of people who are going to adopt a dog already have a dog. Remember that. It's not often that somebody just goes in and doesn't have a dog and they go and they, they rescue another dog. So if they say that dog would like to be an only dog, it's a little code for you. That means the dog is dog aggressive or reactive. It's aggressive, right? It really means aggressive. Read through that. Don't put your dog at risk for another dog. It's not fair. I, it, I, it angers me that people do that. Do not take that chance. Don't do it. If the, it says he wants to be an only dog, go with that. You're, you're going to get your dog hurt. I knew a story. Hold that comment for one second. I had a friend of mine. I'm not going to mention his name because he might be listening. And he married this woman or dated her. I don't know whatever he did. He was with her. And she brought a rescue dog home. And he had this dog that he had loved for years. And this rescue dog, she brought the, oh, the dog's going to be fine, the dog's going to be fine. They went out to dinner. And he came home. And this rescue dog had torn his dog to pieces. I mean, literally, he found a leg in one corner, blood all over the room, pieces of this dog, of his beloved dog, shredded in a room. Killed, massacred because he was too weak to say no to the woman, right? You've got to say no, man. And, uh, and women, wives, females of the female gender, if your boyfriend or husband has some kind of a chip on their shoulder and they say, I can do this, we can do this, no. The answer is no. Don't put your dog or, God forbid, your child or your own safety at risk for some kind of an altruistic BS virtue virtuous task don't do it okay david murden is it a good idea to let a nine-week-old lab meet my son's three-year-old german shepherd he is a bit boisterous i don't think you mean boisterous i think you mean he's kind of a jerk right because when we had duane amater and he was nine weeks old he played with goofy the whole time and with maya and they played very hard with him. Goofy played very, very hard with Dwayne Amater. But he made him a really good dog because I was there. When he got a little too rough, I corrected him. If you can't control that, um, then you, um, you shouldn't be doing it. Right? That dog must be, you must be able to control that dog. You don't want to put a pup, you don't want a puppy getting attacked. That's your number one goal besides feeding him. Brooks, like Garth Brooks. Guys, I, we just watched the Garth Brooks documentary. If you want to see an awesome documentary, watch the Garth Brooks doc. I'm a big country music fan, Southern rock fan, but what a great documentary. Two pieces. And Garth Brooks, if you're ever listening to this, we, Jan, I love you. We love your music, and we think you're a super cool dude. Okay, JT Brooks, probably not related to Garth Brooks, but I thought I'd throw that out there. And I'm not starstruck either, by the way. Garth and I would just like play pool or something, or golf. We would play golf. In your experience, will rescues adopt out to people who are open about using aversive tools and balance training? Excellent question. Well, if they don't, they're idiots, right? Um, municipal shelters generally have to adopt to anybody, right? Um, rescues, some rescues are really good. Like they want a balanced trainer to handle their dog. If they don't, and if they're adopting out dominant dogs, like shepherds, pits, rots, mastiffs, anything like that, and they don't want any aversive tools, run. Just run. Don't, don't even adopt a dog. See, Beth likes Garth Brooks too. JT Brooks. Okay, so Bella Vino. Bella Vino 3 says, I have a shutdown rescue dog. She is not food or treat motivated. I have been trying to, tying her to me and having her with me as I move around the house. It's been three weeks and still afraid. Any suggestions? So what I would do with that dog is I wouldn't tie her to... The tethering is a great technique, by the way. Um, but tethering is going to be a better technique for a dog that's a little bit boisterous because it keeps them in check. What I would do with this dog is crate her and just hand feed. If you have had the dog checked out and there's no serious problems with the dog, like no serious medical problems... i got to wrap this up in two minutes too, guys, by the way. Um, there's no serious medical issues with the dog. 
the dog would only get fed in my presence. And I would start by tossing the food on the floor, tossing it closer to me and closer to me. Because in the beginning, like when I've worked, hey, hey, what are you doing? Crazy. That's Dwayne Mater back there. You guys want to see Dwayne? You want to see a crazy Mater? Look at this. Let me see if I get this. See, look at Dwayne. Oh, no, he's, okay. he's off the couch. He screwed it the whole couch up. Hey, um, so anyway, what was my question? What was I talking about? Oh, tethering, right? So tethering, you, you, you just take the dog in a crate, throw some food on the floor, throw the food closer to you. It might take you two or three or four days. I don't think tethering is going to solve your problem, so I wouldn't do it. Okay, this will be the last question. From Victoria Lukens. Are shelter dogs who have been put in foster home generally more well-adjusted? Yes. Yes. I mean, I love the idea of shelters um, using fosters for dogs because it teaches a dog a skill and you kind of hope that the person who's fostering the dog is a person who is adept at handling dogs, right? You don't want them just handling any dog. Okay, do I have to take one more question? Okay, Janet's making me take one more question. And Janet runs the show, by the way, just so you guys know. Oh, is it, oh it's from Anthony. Of course. Um, Anthony, I'll, anytime I'll answer a question for you. If you guys are in New York leading the pack canine, you need help with your dogs in New York, Anthony's the guy to go to. Anthony's a fantastic trainer, spent time training with me. I recommend him if you have a question. Okay, so Anthony says, do you agree even if a rescue or shelter says dog and kid and cat family, it's always important to do a proper injury? One th that's probably the best question of the day. That's the question to end it with, and that's what I'm going to um, end it on. So if someone tells you that this dog is dog friendly and cat friendly and kid friendly, do not believe that. Remember I said dogs change behavior based on their environment. The dog might be, they might say he's not dog friendly and he might be dog friendly and I can get him dog friendly. But please, first of all, don't take their word for it. Don't leave your dog or your child unattended with a new dog. Never, never monitor, monitor, monitor. And then after you're done monitoring, leave them alone for like 60 seconds and then walk, come walk in the room. Put a camera in the room. I've had cameras in my other place that, that we have. There's a camera in every room. So if I leave the dog in a room, I watch that dog in the other room. I, I, I am like a hawk. I'm a dog Nazi. I am so on top of dog behavior. I don't trust dogs. That's why maybe up to now I've never gotten seriously injured but it's because I don't trust dogs. I'm always watching and always watching. Now I trust these knuckleheads, Jimmy, Dwayne, Goofy, and Maya, and Bosman. I trust them implicitly. But if someone tells you the dog is kid-friendly, unless they have the dog living with a kid, you don't know. You don't know. Don't trust a child's safety or their life on what somebody else said. Never, 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 never. Always go slow, introduce, Go slow and train and really, really, really do your research. Do your work and, and focus on the basics. Focus on good introduction and solid structure. And one thing most importantly, and Anthony will, will attest to this, the dog will respond to a strong person, man or woman. Right? I'm not going to say man. Man or woman, a strong person. I know a lot of women who are stronger handlers than a lot of men. They will respond better to that than a weak handler. They go for structure over love. I'm telling you right now, I've given all of my dogs very firm corrections. They've never have a problem being with me. So listen guys, thank you so much for being here. Um, please hit the bell. We got three thumbs down. I think that's because I was swearing. I apologize for swearing early on this thing. I just lost my mind. I'm really, really sorry. It was unbecoming of me. I apologize, but I just get sometimes riled up and it was wrong. I, I, I said I'm wrong. I apologize, Jan is shaking her head. Shouldn't have done it, but I did it. And you know what, I'm telling you something. I got a lot of skeletons in my closet. I own them. That's it. Own your own problems and you, the world will be a better place. You know, start blaming, oh, well, I'm doing that because when I was in high school, I got whacked with a ruler by the nun. I got whacked with tons of rulers by the nuns. I got whacked so hard by nuns. Penguins. All right. Anyway, all right. So that's it, guys. Love you guys. Thank you so much. Um, if you're a member, um, going in the member section in three minutes, thank you so much for, uh, you can't super chat in the member section. Uh, your, your monthly membership is plenty. Um, if you're a member, I'll see you in a few minutes. And if not, I'll see you next week. I'll be doing another live chat. Thanks a lot for being here, guys. Love you guys all. Thanks so much. And thank you to my beautiful Janet for, I couldn't live life without her. Tearing up a little bit. Okay.